The artist Salvador Dali once said, He who knows how to taste wine does not drink wine, but savors secrets. These secrets are about to be revealed step by step, and I will show you just how fascinating and complex wine production is. Several factors determine a wine's quality and character. These are the soil, the grape variety, the climate, the cultivation methods, and the vinification. James E. Wilson, the well-known geologist and author of books about wine, puts it aptly in his book, Terroir, the Key to Wine. The soil is the soul of the grapevine. Wines need specific soil types in order to achieve their full potential. Good or even very good wines can't be grown everywhere. Depending on the variety of grape and the type of wine sought after, a number of the following factors play a role among others. Nutrient content, root depth, ventilation, water permeability, and mineral content. They say that, principally, thinner soils are better suited to vine growing. Although grammatically we talk about the soil as a singular noun, from a scientific perspective it is divided up into several layers. A layer of decomposed plant remains and straw, a mineral upper soil that is rich in humus, a mineral lower soil made up of sand, silt and clay, and a layer made up almost exclusively of solid rock. Depending on climate, effects of erosion and region, these soil horizons can vary. The majority of the vine's root systems are situated at a depth of 20 to 50 centimeters in young vines. Older vines' roots can reach depths of up to 15 meters. The variety of grapevine used for wine production is known as Vitus vinifera and is primarily native to the Mediterranean, Central Europe, Southwest Asia and the Western Cape of South Africa. As with most other crop plants, there are many different kinds of grapevines known as grape varieties. There are now countless grape varieties across the world. The VIVC, the Vitis International Variety Catalogue, has registered more than 18,000 grape varieties, of which there are only 1,000 permitted for wine production. Although many varieties can survive in different locations, certain growing regions have shown to allow them to thrive and produce better results than others. Some grape varieties have become known for the quality wines they can produce and are known as quality grape varieties. These include, for example, Chardonnay, Muscatel, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot or Pinot Noir, to name but a few. In order to produce high-quality wines, the soil, grape variety and climate must all play a role together. Naturally, temperature is particularly important in wine production. The minimum environmental requirements for vine growth are an annual mean temperature of at least 9 degrees Celsius, an average temperature of at least 18 degrees Celsius in the warmest months, as well as a minimum of 1,300 hours of sunshine per year. But another special climatical condition for small areas where the vineyard is situated play an important role too the location climate and local conditions such as the microclimate. Grapes thrive best in warm, temperate areas in the northern and southern hemispheres. Between the 40th and 50th lines of latitude in the northern and between the 30th and 40th in the southern one. Ideally, a sloped location with vertical sun radiation and proximity to water have a very positive effect. At the Varaison, the beginning of the grape's ripening period, sunny, warm but not too hot weather conditions are an advantage. Long but not too dry autumns promote the storage of sugar, while the cool nights help the formation of acids. If it rains before or during the grape harvest, this can cause the grapes to become diluted and formations of decay can form. There are many different methods to direct a vine's growth. This is known as training. 
The criteria for choosing the ideal training method are, aside from traditional soil type practices, the desired return, environmental conditions, minor control or preventative elimination of vine diseases as well as management requirements. Specific systems are also often required by wine laws. Each winter, from January to March, grapevines are pruned. This is used to regulate the shape and size of the vines. Depending on individual winemaker's preferences and soil composition, a layer of humus or fertilizer can be spread in between rows. With the onset of growth in spring, preventative measures are taken against fungal diseases such as false and real mildew, as well as pest control. This can either be with chemical materials or even ecological methods, such as deploying beneficial organisms against certain pests. New vines are planted. During this period, some 90% of grape vines cultivated are refined to make them more resistant to grape phylloxera from America. European scions are grafted onto phylloxera-resistant American grapes. The most common form used today is called the Omega Cut, named after the Greek letter, which can also be carried out mechanically. Grapevines start to bloom in May and June. Defoliation and leaf cutting begin each summer in the vineyard. Defoliation encourages air circulation in the vineyard so that the grapes dry off much faster after rain. Weak shoots and stem shoots are also removed so that the plant can give all its strength to the strong shoots. Autumn is the most important time for wine growers, as this is when the harvesting and vintage take place. Depending on the climate and grape variety, this sometimes takes place from August onwards. The negative harvest is carried out, whereby all rotten and sunburned grapes are removed. Winemakers use a refractometer to monitor the grape sugar content. They do this to determine the optimum harvest time. The juices of an opened grape are dripped onto a prism situated at the front and the device's cover is closed over it. The sun's rays are led through the prism. The higher the sugar concentration, the more the light rays are disrupted. The sugar content is measured in Erxler, Brix or KMW, which means Klosterneuberger must scale in German. The higher the must weight, that is the level of sugar content, the higher the quality grading the wine will receive. Many countries have wine laws which determine a wine's quality, among other things. In Germany, for example, Prädikat wines start at least 73 degrees Erxler. The higher the Erxler level, the higher the Prädikat will be in the quality pyramid. From lowest to highest, these are Cabinet, Spätlaser, Auslaser, Beerenauslaser, Eiswein and Trockenbeerenauslaser. The Eiswein has a particular qualitative significance and is often seen as being the top of the quality pyramid, although it does not reach the highest levels. 